What's up guys, this is Merc Music, and I bring you guys some new news about Black Ops 2 single player, the campaign missions, and I'm not exactly sure what gameplay I'm going to be using because I just want to talk up to a certain point until I'm finished, and uh, yeah. So I've, I've been seeing a lot of interviews with Mark Lamia, and the only thing they're really covering right now is single player, and like I said in my last breakdown video, this reveal trailer that they gave us is really only supposed to reveal more of the single player aspect of the game, however, he actually revealed a lot more information in a lot of different interviews. So, the main thing that he had said is, is that single player is going to be taking a completely different direction as every single thing seems to be doing for Black Ops 2. He said that the single player worked in a way that it was very linear, there was only one way to actually complete and beat the game, and it's going to be completely revamped and different from that. He says you can traditionally beat the game the way you would, like any other Call of Duty, but they're adding this new Overwatch or Tactical Overview mode, where you can actually hover above the missions you'll be playing in and you'll be able to control your squad you'll be able to uh you can actually choose which character you want to play as so let's say you're running around as mason or you know a squad mate or something you can actually be that person at any given time in the mission you can play as whoever you want and you can also go into you know all the different drones the quad rotor you can go into a jet a tank whatever it may be you can when you're in this overwatch mode you can basically select anything you want and you can control it you can actually he said you can beat the mission from what overwatch mode as long as you are strategizing and you're able to control everybody from that overhead view this is very interesting in and of itself however there is so much more they're saying that every single thing you do is going to impact the storyline of your campaign which means that your campaign is going to be completely different from someone else's depending on the decisions you make in the missions. So let's say, for example, this is the example he gave us in one of the interviews. He had said that let's say you're in a helicopter with some other troops and uh, you're going on a mission and you can choose to either sit back and snipe or you can actually rappel down and go on foot and shoot with some of the other soldiers. You have to go like at these, there's these fork roads constantly in the missions and you have to decide what you're going to do and based on what you do is going to basically affect the outcome of the mission. So the way, I'll, I'm going to say one more thing and then I'm going to mention uh, how this is going to affect the achievement side because this is going to be completely different for the single player aspect because it's mostly for achievement whores, I guess you could say, or gamer score whores, whatever you want to call them. But the final thing I want to talk about is Strike Zone. And Strike Zone are, I believe, they're not levels, like common levels. They're levels that show up uh, every so often and they have a number of different, different missions that you actually have to choose from. And you can choose whatever mission you want. However, you do not get to go back and do the mission. If you fail the mission, you fail it, and that's going to affect the storyline. However, if you succeed, it's going to affect the storyline in a different way. And it's going to have an effect on the geopolitical side of the game. So this is huge. Single player is already sounding more interesting than anything else they've really said, except for zombies. And I do want to cover uh, zombies a little bit. But before I say that, how is this going to affect the achievement side? Because if there's going to be, like, you know, there's all these different variables that are going to make the single player different... How are you really going to be able to beat the single player? Because you, you're going to beat it in all these different ways, and I just don't see how you're going to be able to get all these different achievements. And, you know, the missions where you fail, fail or succeed, um, if you're not able to go back and do that, it's going to be kind of confusing, because he said you can go back and play some of the other missions, and it's also going to affect the timeline of your story. This is just huge, and they're kind of throwing this all at us at once, and there's a lot to take in. However, single player, for me, from what I've heard, it's going to be huge, and I had to share this with you guys because, you know, even though you might not be that interested in the campaign, you're going to want to look forward to this one because the storyline that these guys create and, you know, zombie players and zombie lovers out there, you do know that, that Treyarch does a very good job at developing the story. So, I don't know. From what I've just seen and heard, single player is shaping up to be pretty amazing. Now, I did want to cover zombies just for a quick second because, you know, they haven't said too much about zombies or multiplayer. They're doing separate reveals for those later for those modes or whatever you want to call them but zombies apparently it is rumored that zombies is not going to be just a four player mode anymore it's going to be eight player and they're going to be designing it around the multiplayer and you know what modern warfare 3 kind of did that with spec ops you were able to achieve ranks not really prestigious or anything they didn't go too far with that but what i'm thinking they're going to be doing is adding more leaderboards and they're going to you're going to be able to rank up and get guns and other kinds of equipment and things like that and since this is a game of the future you're probably going to be able to be able to unlock uh kill streaks and other things like that like the quad rotors that might be really handy when you get into a really bad situation in zombies and the fact that you're going to have eight players is going to heavily impact zombies itself 
because, you know, having eight players, you know, you'll be able to support each other a lot better. However, you're going to have to make sure you can distribute the money properly. So this is going to be very interesting in, in how it impacts the zombies mode. So uh, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to really cover. They're going to be doing separate reveals for zombies. They did talk a lot about zombies. However, they're not really covering too much about the multiplayer. However, from what I've heard, just from seeing how they're going to be completely revamping the single player, expect to see something completely different for multiplayer. And, you know, I'm pretty sure they want to stick to the, you know, I don't know. They want to keep the multiplayer design to a certain degree, like the old ones, because they want to make it enjoyable. They don't want to completely screw up the multiplayer. However, they're going to do something innovative, and really that's what made Modern Warfare 3 relatively boring for me, only because it wasn't very innovative and they're taking a completely different direction with this game, and Black Ops 2 is shaping up to be a pretty good game in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay, whatever it is, and the commentary, but that's basically it. I will see you guys later.